puzzling is our sanitation fund. Pleasant Grove hires an outside company to pick up our garbage and recycling items. So we don't own any trucks and we don't have any employees. All we do is write a check and pay the bill. But even though our employee wages are zero, our administrative costs are $235,000. How much could it possibly cost to write a check? This is Don Paz. Whatever it does cost to write that check, it's unfortunate that taxpayers like you and I are paying for these costs in our utility bills. Pulling out my calculator, I found the following. Last year, the total cost of employee wages from all four of our enterprise funds was just under 957000 while our total administrative costs were basically double that, over $1.8 million. That's a lot of money not being directed to our worsening infrastructure, and far more money than Blaine, Matt, or I believe it could truly cost to administer these enterprise funds. Then I found something even more concerning in the five-year performance for these funds. According to the budget that the City Council just approved, wages are expected to increase an additional $166,000, while at the same time the City Administrators and City Council have budgeted in over $267,000 more in administrative costs. In other words, it appears they are planning for these administrative inefficiencies to get worse, not better. With planned inefficiencies like this in our enterprise funds, you have to assume we're going to find additional inefficiencies in the general fund as well, meaning another $4.8 million we need to look at more closely. Citizens of Pleasant Grove, in this election, unless you elect three people who see these problems, understand them, and are committed to addressing them, will never find enough money for the roads and infrastructure. You know, there's only one way to fix these out-of-line administrative costs, and you'll find our commitment to fixing it on our website and on our flyers. If you elect us, we will analyze city budgets line by line reprioritize spending, and allocate substantially more funds for roads, water, and sewer infrastructures. We will accomplish these goals without closing down any of our public safety needs or our beloved city amenities, including the library, pool, rec center, senior centers, or youth programs. Um, <laughs> uh, election years are fun because I can learn a lot of interesting stuff, okay? And so there's been um, some, some neat videos that have been shown on YouTube, and I, I, they've raised some concern for me. Um, and I, I, I snapshotted, or I screenshot the videos and print them off if anyone needs a copy, of, maybe you've seen them. Um, but there's graphs that are saying that, um, that the department spending and... Um, it shows that department spending is not enough, that there's not enough money going to the roads, and that we've had huge increases in the last five years, and I'm just wondering, is there a plan or money in the future for the roads? Yeah, we're, we don't have an identified source for all of the money to fix the roads, but we have been working with JEB for a year to put together a plan to fix the roads, what order, what would be done, how it would take place, what would be constituted satisfactory, how much it would cost overall, and then as far as how that would be paid for, um, we have not yet come up with all of the, the funding for that. So, because um, it, it says that, uh, well, I guess does, it, does the city run a balanced a balance budget? Yes. We're required by law to have a balanced budget. Okay. Because this video, um, it talks about, and maybe this might be more for, uh, for Dean and maybe for the staff, but um, it said that there is um, 1.8 million in administri admi administrative fees and costs that could be used. At least a video saying it could be used for the, uh, for the roads. Um, so there, it kind of alluded to maybe the city's padding the money, and, and I don't know where the money is going, but there is a large substantial amount of money in the administrative costs versus the, the income, uh, the salaries. And so the video says that they could use that money for roads, and I'm just, if we're running a balanced budget, 
maybe help us understand, and maybe today you can't tell us, but help us understand what is that 1.7 million for? Probably a, probably a short answer to that question. Um, I'll give a long one. Um, and if you want more, we could, uh, I could do something next week, put some slides together. Well, we could speak to that as council members. There's a lot of policy decisions that are built into what the priorities are that are reflected in the budget. So. So, so if we want to talk about us too, what you have. Yeah. So if I can give a, just a quick explanation of when we say what the overhead allocation or sometimes we refer to those as administrative fees that are on there. So I look at it this way. You really have two types of things that the city does. We have things that are governmental activities, we call as an accounting term. I mean, those things are paid largely with taxes, um, things like police, fire, even a lot of our say, parks, even some of our recreation programs, there's fees associated with them, but they don't cover the full cost. So I would try to call those governmental activities. We also have activities that we do have fees that pay for the full cost. And typically those are our utilities, right? So water, sewer, storm drain, uh, sanitation is one of those as well. So if you think of a department budget, each one of those departments has a budget. So police officers, their supplies, their equipment, things like that. Things that are directly associated with each of those um, budgets go to those, get charged to those accounts, right? And we also have kind of a third category of things that I would call just overhead. And it's it's really similar to, I used to work up for the, the Larry Miller group up at the Jordan Commons complex. And up there we had an office tower, we had theaters, and we had restaurants. Sure. And so it's kind of the same thing. We had these operational departments, but then we also had overhead costs, things like administration or finance or um, custodial, those were the main things. And so each month we would get together and say, you know, those administrative things, they don't just work for one of the three groups, right? They work for all three of the groups. So we allocate those costs in some method, kind of, you know, try to have some, some way to uh, appropriately allocate how much costs that are associated with those to those to those groups. And uh, this is really the same thing. So in addition to the governmental activities and the utilities, we also have things like, again, we have uh, finance and accounting. There's not, there's not uh, an accountant that works for the police department that just does the police. So we have central accounting, central finance. Um, also engineering is in there, um, legal is in there, custodial is in there. And there's also costs that are just Things like our liability insurance, things like our IT budget, we outsource our IT, so the, so the costs go on those. So, so the idea is how do we take those costs, they belong in the governmental funds, or they belong in the enterprise funds. And so what I try to do is, um, as accurately as possible, or as fairly as possible, try to allocate those costs between the two. So I know when we're, the, the $1.7 million, I know that's been mentioned in administrative costs under enterprise funds, that's essentially what I've calculated is what their share of those costs are. And it's about, I think it's about 45% of the whole gets allocated to the enterprise funds and about 55% would get allocated to the governmental funds. And there is some subjectivity in that any, any time you're doing allocations like that, right? So, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I would say, for me personally, I probably spend more time on enterprise funds than I do on governmental funds because the accounting is more complicated, the budgeting is more complicated, there's just more things you have to do. But there might be other administrative departments that are going to be that way. So, so essentially what that is, and I think the main thing to realize that is if somehow we said, well, it shouldn't be $1.7 million, it should be $1 million, you know, how would we determine that? Um, whatever we reduce those administrative costs to the enterprise funds, we're essentially putting it into the, to the governmental funds, right? So we would have to reduce the governmental funds budget somewhere to, to offset that that cost. That so that sense. money can't can't be absorbed and put into robes. That money's spent whether it's in governmental or in enterprise. That so if you took half a million out of gov or out of enterprise, then we'd have to cut you would have to add a governmental fund. Because because really, all of those departments are in, if you look at the budget, how the budget works, all of those departments are in the governmental funds. And so we're saying the enterprise funds are going to pay back a portion of that cost because, again, what, what the exact number is could be a little bit up to debate, but it's certainly not 
zero, and it's certainly not 100 percent. It's got to be somewhere in the middle. So, but yeah, any money we would cut out of there, that yeah, wouldn't be available for roads. We'd have to cut it out of the general fund somehow. So I, I get it. I understand overhead, <laughs> and they're done that one. So it's really no different than the concept that a lot of companies do. We have certain overhead costs that you have to allocate to cost centers. You're really taking a percentage good. of what you think those departments are using, and that's a percentage of the total money, and the, that fair percentage of it that it needs. Right. Okay. That, that was the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> the long answer would involve a whiteboard and some graphs. So, <laughs> so I guess they, maybe more what you're saying. The one point seven million just can't be taken and used for something else. These are salaries. These are administrative costs. These are, I mean, there's a, a lot of things associated with these costs that they just can't be put towards roads or public safety or something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, specifically, he says the administration. These services include city administrator, finance and accounting, legal and engineering. There are also costs related to property and liability insurance, information technology, utilities, custodial and maintenance services. Uh, basically, these services aren't specific to either government services or utilities. They're to support both government services and utilities. So they need to be, they're, they're people, and they need to be divided up and, and shared amongst all of the departments according to his estimate of how much each department uses. And so the reason it's not under the salary is because they're not a dedicated employee for That's that. Specific. Department is that right. is that they, why it falls under administrative costs? Yeah, and like I said, there's things I do for both government, both departments, and enterprise departments. So all of those things I mentioned serve both both functions. And David mentioned too, like our front office staff. But back then, they primarily a lot of primarily deal with utilities. They don't deal with utilities, right? They've seen payment, 